let's look at little more graphically what is lsl and usl low specification limit upper specification limit if the biscuit should weigh if the cookie should weigh between 10 grams and 11 grams the lower specification limit is 10 grams and the upper specification limit is 11 grams okay so this is the product tolerance our product is say cookie now this is the measurement variation if the measurement variation precision to tolerance ratio is 20 percent this is just graphically representing if it is occupying the full tolerance then it's an issue because 100 percent it is occupying the tolerance so precision to tolerance ratio is 100 percent if it will occupy the full specification limits so we should keep it less than 10 percent and if it is more then there is no use of doing this okay so here the product tolerance is the specification range the blue curves represents the distribution of the test values and we would get if tested single perfect sample exactly at the target many times okay so all that you have to understand is it should be less than 10 percent okay now coming to gauge r and r and this is what we are going to actually calculate using an excel sheet i'll tell you the procedure to do and i'll tell you how to calculate in the excel sheet so this will address what percent of the total variation is taken up by the measurement error and this is the formula for that and you can read this the effect of gauge r and r Suppose if the demonstration of the impact of test variability, if red is a process, the process spread increases to blue because the gauge or the measurement device is also causing an issue. So if gauge R and R is percentage of repeatability and reproducibility is zero, then there is no test variation it will be equivalent to process suppose if it is something like 55 percent then it will add to the variation and the curve will expand at the bottom suppose if it is 30 percent maybe the peak will little bit come down let's say if it is 10 percent it is almost equal to the process variation this is what I wanted to demonstrate to help you understand that 10% is very good. 30% just indicates that you need to, you still can go ahead and measure, but then make sure your gauge is calibrated and does not worsen. And if it is greater than 30%, do not conduct the measurement. Okay. 